Good afternoon or good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Ethan Gilardi with the Conserve Wildlife Foundation of New Jersey. I am uh, our bat biologist and one of many wildlife biologists that work with the organization. And I am here to uh, welcome everyone to the virtual award ceremony for the 2021 Species on the Edge uh, social media competition. Uh, we have all of our winners here, as well as a whole host of wonderful speakers ready to congratulate uh, these just fantastic high school students on their hard work and their accomplishments. Uh, our first speaker today will be Steve Newman. He's the president of the Board of Trustees for CWF. Um, and without uh, further ado, let's uh, turn it over to Steve. Uh, hi, and uh, thank you for joining us, Steve. Yeah, thanks Thanks for having me, Ethan. You know, you said that people might be surprised that you're not like 50. I wish I was like 50. Um, <laughs> So uh, I'm president of the Board of Trustees, and I just wanted to make a few comments today. The first is that it's, um, it's rare that a program can have sort of a multi-pronged impact in, in the world. And, uh, but, but Species on the Edge 2.0 does just that. Um, not only does it have as its purpose helping endangered and vulnerable species, but it also allows talented and creative students to showcase their work. And so we're, we're really excited to, to, to have that work and to see it. So on behalf of the board, I first of all wanna thank PSEG Foundation for their um, continued support and sponsorship. And I also wanna thank the talented students who submitted their work and of course, congratulate the 2021 winners. So, you know, just some very brief comments there, but um, uh, you know, this is just such a great program and I'm so excited to be here. So I'm going to now turn it over to Russ Fernari, who's the environmental policy manager for PSENG. Hello, everyone. And uh, again, welcome. Um, I am uh, happy to add my uh, congratulations for to all of you and appreciation for the, the ongoing efforts of, of many high school students to participate. Uh, in this uh, program. The PSEG Foundation is proud to be able to support this and, in, and engage with high school students uh, to uh, develop a, a greater awareness of uh, endangered species in New Jersey and across the world. And uh, we appreciate your participation and uh, I look forward to hearing from, from all of you. Now I'll pass it back to over to David. Thank you, Russ. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm David Wheeler, Executive Director with Conserve Wildlife Foundation. And um, just a quick uh, few words about our organization, which you came to know a little bit, I'm sure, through uh, your great social media work for this contest. Uh, Conserve Wildlife for the past 20 years has worked to protect rare and at-risk wildlife across New Jersey and beyond. And uh, we do this work through three main areas. The first, of course, is our field science, our wildlife biologists out in the field protecting the species that, that really need our help to survive. We've been a, a part of some really incredible recoveries, world-class world type recoveries like the bald eagle uh, that you couldn't even see in the state really a few decades ago. And now you can see it in all 21 counties nesting. Um, the, the osprey that you can see along our coast daily this time of year, peregrine falcons, bobcats. Uh, those recoveries have been tremendous and, and really inspiring, but we've also been a part of uh, just trying to help uh, species that have declined so sharply, just try to help make sure that they still have a place in the state moving forward. That could be some of our beach nesting birds, uh, some of our, our migratory shorebirds and songbirds, our bat species that that Ethan uh, helps lead our, our work to protect. Um, and, and of course, even pollinators, including uh, one of the species that you highlighted with your work in this contest. Uh, so, so that's a huge part of what we do. We also do habitat restoration and enhancement. And uh, New Jersey, of course, being the most densely populated state, it's vital that we the land we do have, both the natural preserved landscapes, but also even our our urban and suburban landscapes, doing everything we can uh, to enhance that habitat for wildlife, whether it's using bird and bat boxes, planting native uh, plants and shrubs and trees, um, or, or connecting wildlife habitat into corridors and, and contiguous areas uh, in partnership with the state and many of our other partners. Uh, all of that is, is vital. But the third 
and equally important component of what we do is our public engagement and that and ed education. And that includes contests like this one. When we conceived of Species on the Edge 2.0 around five years ago, we envisioned it as a way for high school students to utilize the skills that they know inherently that people of our older generations are, you know, are still learning and still trying to become technologically savvy with, while your generation just knows and thrives in it. And using those skills that you already possess uh, to help with a cause like protecting the wildlife that needs it most is, is a vital uh, element of our work. And, and you all symbolize that with, with your creativity and your hard work and, and uh, just such a fantastic job in putting together your various campaigns. So I thank you for that. Um, and with that, I'm uh, thrilled to turn it back over to Ethan and uh, we can get to see some of your projects and meet you up close. So yeah, hi, thank you, David. Uh, you know, if you know, the, the important thing to do here is kind of describe what, what this contest even was. Uh, if you know someone's viewing this recording later and they've gotten this far into the video and they still don't know what's happening, uh, let me uh, help fill you in a little here. So as David kind of alluded to, uh, the Species on the Edge 2.0 social media contest is here to kind of take advantage of how easily and quickly teenagers have adapted to this new social media environment we find ourselves in and how, you know, social media isn't just always a bad thing. There's a lot of good that can come out of social media. And uh, one of those things is informational campaigns. Uh, so what our, our students did is high school students uh, from all across the state of New Jersey, um, created a, a, a series of original social media posts, whether it was on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. This year we included TikTok because we're hip, <laughs> TikTok because we are hip and with it. Um, uh, and, and the idea was to show the importance of uh, wildlife protection uh, here in New Jersey. Uh, they, students created their own original content, whether it was videos, uh, text-based, photography, uh, computer graphics, artwork. Uh, and they, they utilized a lot of the existing CWF content uh, that we have available on our website uh, and used a whole host of other sources from around the internet uh, to try and teach uh, the public about some of the species that we here at Conserve Wildlife work with. Um, over the course of eight days, these posts were put up. Uh, they were then you know, ranked by likes uh, with uh, the top ones going to the semifinals. Um, and it was, it was definitely a, a difficult decision this year with who to go with. We had dozens of applications uh, and just lots of great hard work going into this. Um, and and I'm, I'm really proud with the uh, four students we ended up with at the, uh, the top of the contest this year. They all just worked so hard. It, it's really clear in the work that they put out um, that these students really care about the species they chose. Um, and that uh, they, they really took this competition seriously um, and didn't just, you know, create generic campaigns that are like, oh, here's, you know, a little bit about this species. They, they, they really went above and beyond uh, to help teach, uh, you know, their followers and, and, and other people who were able to find their posts uh, uh, about all these different species. So let us transition now over into uh, the, the giving out of our uh, virtual awards and and congratulations. So let me share my screen once more, and we will move on to our runner-up uh, for this competition, who is Kayla Cotter from Manalapan, New Jersey, uh, who focused on the bronze copper butterfly, uh, which is a a great lepidopteran. Uh, that we have here in New Jersey. It's a fancy word for uh, butterflies. Um, you know, uh, Kayla took, took a magnifying glass uh, to this wonderful pollinator that we have living here in the state. Um, her series of posts was overflowing with information, drew lots of attention. Um, she had one of the higher number of likes we had in the competition this year. Uh, all of her posts were very bright, kinetic, packed with information. Uh, no slide was particularly lacking in glitter uh, or you know, uh, information uh, on this uh, butterfly that is, you know, endangered here in New Jersey, um, but that there isn't really a lot of information readily available and out there for. Um, she utilized the platform to its fullest, uh, making her posts on Instagram, 
uh, using videos, uh, multiple slides, lots of hashtags, games, uh, uh, lots of pictures, um, and and really uh, put the work in to describe this, you know, small, often overlooked, but uh, absolutely gorgeous butterfly that we have here in the state. Um, and without further ado, I'd like to turn it over to Kayla uh, to uh, accept her award. Um, thank you. <laughs> I, this is going to be really bad. I have really bad social anxiety. I'm not a good speaker at all. Um, <laughs> but um, no, thank you. I really, I really enjoyed taking part in this competition. Um, it was it was hard it was harder than I expected it to be, and I put a lot of hard work into it. And I really enjoyed you know the information I was able to find. Like you had said, it was um it's like there's not a lot of information on it, and it was like it was really like interesting and like hard to find sources where I could find like new information on it. It just <laughs> so it was it was good. I um really I was inspired to do it by my sister. My sister's um. She's in sixth grade. She's younger than me. She's like really into um, animal conservation and like animals and she like loves them. Uh, so she was really happy when I showed her what I was doing. <laughs> um, but I don't really, I don't really have a lot to say. I'm really bad at speaking. <laughs> you're, you're totally fine. Uh, we will move on. Congratulations again, Kayla. Uh, you did a Thank good you. job. No worries. Let me... Uh, oh, it's my face again. Oh, no. Oops. Uh, let me share my screen once more uh, to introduce our third place uh, winner, which is Caitlin Cheng from Fort Lee, New Jersey. Um, Caitlin's post series was fantastic. Uh, uh, truly uh, uh, something special that we had in the contest this year. Uh, she, she flexed her artistic muscles. Uh, to create a, a wonderful series of posts, including lots of original art for the bobcat, uh, one of the species we have here in New Jersey. And if you noticed when Dave was speaking, he's got a bobcat behind him. Um, uh, she did digital painting time lapses, which was with something that uh, in the two years I've been working on this competition, I don't think I've seen anyone do, uh, which is really cool where, you know, she recorded herself doing digital paintings of bobcats uh, and then played those sped up over time so you could see the paintings develop. Um, and while she was doing that, she uh, just rattled off tons and tons of wonderful information about bobcats. Um, uh, she used lots of supplementary resources. There were quizzes to make sure the audience was paying attention and not just watching art be made. Um, and just made these, you know, jam-packed posts even more informative with that. Uh, Caitlin's passion and hard work really made this series of posts a joy to watch. Um, and and we're, we're really excited to see where her artistic uh, and naturalist career takes her. Um, so, so congratulations, Caitlin, on, on, on your third place. It is, it is well-deserved uh, and your, your hard work really shows. Um, so we're gonna turn it over to Caitlin uh, as she accepts her award. Yeah, thank you so much. It's, I've, oh wait, I, I think I'll try to stand up. <laughs> I've, <laughs> I've always been interested in art really, but when I got to high school, I kind of like kind of dropped it to focus more on my studies. So on top of learning about nature and stuff, I'm glad that this like contest allowed me to get back into my art mindset and stuff. So thank you for that too. And I, I well, of course I didn't, my posts were kind of like overflowing, I felt, and I didn't really, uh, I, I thought they were kind of like, I guess, unorganized but I'm really glad you guys like them so um like Kayla I'm not that good at speeches so I actually wrote mine out so um I hope I didn't go too overboard but yeah I think I'll just go right in thank you okay according to all known laws of aviation there is no way that a bee should be able to fly its wings are too small to get its fat little body off the ground the bee, of course, flies anyways, because bees don't care what humans think is impossible. Those were the opening lines of the 2007 bee movie, and this is true. The tiny wings of a bee relative to the size of its body do not satisfy the conventional lift equation. In the 1930s, French entomologist August Magnin concluded that a bee's flight should be impossible. And even to aerodynamicists, the flight of the bee remained a mystery for 70 more years 
until modern technology like high-speed cameras, vacuum chambers, and wind tunnels to create smoke streams allowed the creation of an aerodynamic model for the bees. To our astonishment, we finally discovered in the early 2000s that bees flap their wings back and forth rather than up and down, generating mini vortexes that produce low pressure areas which propel bees upward. Even this seemingly most simple natural phenomenon, the flight of a bee took more than 70 years for us to explain. Only in recent years did I start realizing how spectacular nature is from a scientific standpoint, but I've always noticed how inherently fascinating nature is. From watching nature adventure, adventurers, the wildcrafts on the Cubo and television network as a small kid, to spotting green parrots on my way to middle school, no matter all that has changed in my life, my admiration for the wonder of nature has remained constant. As I grew older, this admiration expanded to an appreciation for the ingeniousness of mother nature. If you look, all sorts of concepts could be found in nature, be it mathematical like the Fibonacci sequence or butterfly effect, or something entirely different like the teamwork of bees in a hive, the empathy of an elephant, or the intellect of a chimpanzee. Why is the Fibonacci sequence encoded in a seashell or a sunflower head? How can a bee defy its weight with such unbelievably tiny wings? For all the human geniuses it took to create the most impressive feats of art and engineering that we see today, it's astonishing that things just as good or even better arose out of mother nature naturally. I also find that there's a quality to nature that differentiates it wholly from the bustling lives that we, at least here in the US, know today. For all the complexity of our lives, nature has a different type of complexity in its interconnectedness, peaceful and even truthful in its simplicity. Take away or add one component of an ecosystem and everything goes askew. To me, it's these qualities that make nature beautiful and if lost irreplaceable. Not only are we extinguishing animals, extinguishing entire species like the vaquita, but we're harming ourselves. We're leaving behind a world where eight in 10 American children will never see a sky dark enough to glimpse the Milky Way compared to just decades ago. We're losing biodiversity in nature, killing species and making it necessary for foundations like the NJ Conservation and Wildlife Foundation to swoop in and take a stand. I try to do my part taking on projects like these and volunteering to help clean up the shorelines. I don't really know what I'll do after high school, but I've always enjoyed reading things reading all things imaginative. Combined with my persistence and love for solving puzzles, I know that I'll end up somewhere in the technological sector when I grow up. Right now I'm studying engineering, and that's only made me realize the value of nature. Some of the best feats of engineering come from what's called biomimicry, or in other words, maybe replicating the structure of a lily leaf to create waterproof materials, or observing the shape of a bird's beak to create a bullet train. I enjoyed learning everything about the bobcat, like the ecological importance of predators like it, the types of forests that exist, the impact of the European settlement on the species, how to distinguish between the bobcat and the almost similar Canadian lynx, and even a tiny bit about the politics that goes behind conserving wildlife. As our cities develop, more roads are created, fragmenting habitats and making it difficult for the wildlife to survive. From this contest, I learned about change a tool which maps the habitat distribution of animal species, helping conservationists to prioritize land protection and allowing people like me to see our place in the New Jersey habitat connectivity map. Participating in this contest was truly a pleasure. And I'm really glad that I had the opportunity to learn more about nature and the bobcat and other animals as well, both through my own research and reading the posts of my peers. And I just want to say, uh, thank you so much for having me here and putting together this contest. I know it was probably really difficult. We went through a lot of emails and deciding the dates and stuff. So I know it was really hard organizing it. And I just want to say thank you for all the effort that was put into this. And thank you for having me here once again. And that concludes my speech. Thank you. Thank you, Caitlin. Wonderful. What is what a what a smart cookie <laughs> and quoting B movie, one of my favorite movies and one of the best movies to come out in the last decade. Uh, that, that, oh, no, that was like that's like a 20 year old movie at this point. Oh, wow. Anyway, let me let me move past my own existential crises about when Jerry Seinfeld's B movie came out uh, and let us move on to our second place winner, uh, who is Amvitha Nekanti. 
uh, of Parsippany, New Jersey, who did her series of posts uh, on our wonderful beach nesting bird, the piping plover. Uh, one of my uh, favorite species. I, I used to do some chore bird work, uh, and I am I'm very partial uh, to these these little cute guys. I've gotten to see one or two in my lifetime, which I feel I feel blessed to have been able to do. Uh, but uh, Avita's uh, series of posts were jam packed with information uh, and featured just this adorable artwork uh, of the piping plover and other shore-faring species, um, and, and really it captured the essence of, of the Jersey Shore. Um, her use of infographics, videos, and games made her post just a, a really multimedia extravaganza. Uh, it was chock full of interactivity. Uh, her post also included a wealth of additional resources for viewers to explore, always introducing some new source uh, for, for the viewers of her campaign to go off and explore and learn even more. Um, so, Envita, thank you for, for, for capturing the spirit of the Jersey Shore and the wildlife that calls it home uh, and, and really putting in the work and creating such a, a delightful campaign um, about New Jersey's uh, uh, cute little, little resident plovers uh, of the piping variety. Um, so, Evita, congratulations, and I will turn it over to you. Um, thank you so much. Uh, can you hear me okay? If you speak up just a little, I think we'll be good. Can you hear me okay now? Okay, so hello everyone. I just wanted to thank everyone that worked so hard to put together the Species on Edge social media contest. I thought that this contest was a wonderful way to show the importance of wildlife protection in New Jersey. And I'd also like to thank the Conserved Wildlife Foundation of New Jersey for working so hard to protect this vulnerable species, the piping plovers, and also so many others. And lastly, I'd also like to thank my friends and family for always supporting me, and also my one friend that encouraged me to enter this competition. Um, so the reason that I first entered this competition was because I'm really passionate about graphic design. And I absolutely love creating social media design posts and just exploring the boundaries in which I can make posts more interactive and get um, users and viewers to be really interested in the content and to interact with it in really creative ways. And so this uh, competition really um, inspired me to push those boundaries and figure out more creative ways for users to learn more about how to conserve the piping clovers and how to learn about the information. After high school, I plan to study at Boston University and learn more about biomedical engineering. And I've always wanted to make a positive impact on the world and biomedical engineering was a way that I thought I, um, I would be able to do that. But I also love uh, exploring different ways that I can make a positive impact on the world. And I definitely think that social media is a wonderful way to do that by creating um, posts that advocate for the protection of different species and important issues. Um, what originally got me more into nature or connected me to it is quarantine, because when quarantine was happening, there wasn't a lot of things that you could do safely, but something that me and my family did a lot was go on hikes and just really enjoy nature and take in um, nature for what it is and just enjoy it. And what, through this contest, I've learned so much about the intricacies and details that are related to the conservation of wildlife and have gained a new appreciation for the diversity of species in New Jersey. Okay, thank you, Avita. I see everyone, we see on video, we're all clapping. <laughs> uh, okay, let me replace the spotlight. Oh no, we see my face again as I try and share my screen. Uh, again, congratulations, wonderful speech. You, these kids this year are so smart. Everyone's so smart. Uh, it's fantastic. Uh, let us move on to our first place winner, uh, who is Bennett Davenport from Morristown, New Jersey, of the Instagram and YouTube channel, The Budget Museum. Uh, Bennett came into this contest uh, with a, a really great uh, tool in his back pocket, which is uh, he is a fantastic video essayist. It turns out, and he decided to turn his 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 abilities uh, and his uh, social media uh, prowess onto uh, the shore-faring um, bird of prey that we have here in New Jersey, called the osprey. 
Uh, his unique approach to the contest was, you know, creating this fully produced series of video essays on his Instagram uh, was a really, you know, a, a great standout in the wide variety of submissions we received this year. Uh, Bennett provided, uh, proved to be a, a charismatic host, uh, drawing the audience in with humor, wit, and knowledge. Uh, the series of mini documentaries, each focusing on a different part of the Osprey's life history, uh, were entertaining, informative, well-written, and well-edited. Um, uh, with, with a clear dedication and care for wildlife education. Uh, I, I really uh, hope to see Bennett continue his efforts to educate all of us about animals, both modern and prehistoric. Uh, I know he, he likes to focus on more of those uh, uh, prehistoric animals uh, with his social media presence, but uh, we were definitely very lucky to have him turn his eyes towards the Osprey uh, and take part in this competition. And really congratulations you did a wonderful job, clearly well-deserved uh, for this first place spot. Um, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to you if I could figure out how to share this screen correctly. There we go, take it away, Bennett. Okay, just make sure the, the mic works, right? Okay. Um, I would say, yeah, I really think of sort of, when I saw this one, my mom sent this uh, project to me. I really think, you know, I was probably gonna succeed in some fashion just because, uh, you know, this contest is sort of symbolizes um, something that I think will, in terms of like wildlife uh, conservation and all of that will sort of be the way we teach people about this, which is uh, the idea of, you know, getting education and entertainment into one thing. People call it, you know, on the internet, they call it edutainment. This idea that in order to inform the audience and to make them care about something, which is, you know, of course, really important when you're talking about endangered species, uh, you got to keep them engaged. You got to entertain them in some fashion. And that sort of, that was sort of, those were my two things I always thought about when making this contest. Everything I did, I tried to keep it informative. Every, you know, all the, all my scripts and all the things, these little mini videos I made, they were, you know, they were all structured very, very specifically with, you know, uh, topics and, and facts and all of that. A very, you know, just, uh, you know, to make it as, um, oh, what's the word, streamlined as, as possible. Um, but I also made it like that because, you know, under one minute, you know, about one minute, I always made all the scripts like one minute or so just because about 60 seconds in, people stop caring about whatever you're talking about. That's just, that's just how it goes. Same with the animal I picked. I picked the Osprey because, I mean, I think the Osprey is cool, but I also think like slugs are cool. And, but I do know, I'm pretty sure every, everyone else thinks a cool, like, fish catching bird that they don't really know too much about. It's not like an eagle that everyone thinks they know. Osprey, don't, you don't hear it too much. It's a bit obscure. So people can certainly get intrigued by that and you know, want to learn about that. Um, and that goes for you know, everything else I did about educating and entertain, enter, entertaining. Um, you know, I tried to put audio in there. I tried to cut it up. I tried to put pictures and edit goofy stuff in there and all of that just to sort of keep the audience um, you know, engaged but informed and hopefully learn a bit about uh, the Osprey and hopefully maybe do something uh, to help uh, the Osprey's cause. Um, as for my future, I mean, you know, I, I sort of want to do this stuff, you know, as long as possible. I really like educating myself and learning about, you know, animals, you know, extinct or alive. And of course, I think I'm pretty good at, uh, you know, video essays and communicator of information and a sort of just an entertaining little guy. Um, I don't know exactly how I'll pursue that career. It doesn't, it's not really a set in stone career, um, but you know, certainly this has been an incredible stepping stone uh, to get there and you know, to pursue um, you know, my dreams. So really once more, you know, thank you so much. And thank you, Bennett, for, for, for your wonderful words there. And I think what, what Bennett said there can apply to everyone who took place in this competition, that, that some of the, the biggest keys when it comes to doing uh, environmental education or, or you, know, you want to be informative, uh, you want to get the story out there, both the good and the bad uh, when, it, when it comes to educating people about animals, but you also need to be entertaining uh, and attention grabbing, which is I think something all of our winners were able to do uh, 
and, and kind of all the participants in the contest this year. And this is, you know, as, as a wildlife educator myself, I don't just do field work. I, I also work uh, in, I, I give bat talks all around the state. Uh, and, and one of the big issues I have when educating people about bats is people don't really like bats. Uh, there's a lot of fear that goes on. Uh, and, and bats have a lot of really awful issues they're coming up against, whether it is new uh, negative associations when it comes to COVID, uh, whether it's climate change, habitat loss, white nose syndrome. These are all real bummer topics to talk about. Um, but so you have to find ways that, that grab your audience's attention um, and, and hold it there so you can get through things like that, but also add in all these, you know, fun other things. I too like to Photoshop little pairs of glasses or uh, bits of clip art onto pictures of bats for my presentations. I like to create my own art. Uh, for these things or, or create fun games to engage the audience. Uh, and, and everyone here did such a great job with that. So, so once again, congratulations to Kayla, Caitlin, and Vita and Bennett. Y'all did such a fantastic job. Uh, thank you to Steve and Russ and David uh, for getting us started off today. Um, thank you to everyone who took part in the competition this year. Thanks to everyone's families for, for clearly supporting all of y'all. Uh, and helping you take part in this. Um, and I guess to, to close out our, our awards today, let's just have everyone unmute. We could do a nice big clap and a congratulations to everyone. So let's, congrats everybody. Woo. Congrats everybody. Congratulations. Great job. Congratulations. I hope everyone has a wonderful evening. You too, Ethan. Thank you. Bye, thank you.